afternoon, Dr. Fauci. Hi, how are you? Good, and you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I know it's been a very hectic day for you today, so thank you so much. I am Carmen G. Cantor. I am the U.S. Ambassador to the Federated States of Micronesia, the FSM, a beautiful country in the West Pacific comprised of 607 islands. Because of our unique and enduring relationship with Micronesia, the United States government through HHS and CDC have responded to the FSM request to prepare for the COVID-19 pandemic. We have provided thousands of uh, dollars worth of PPE, ventilators, test kits, training, and now vaccines. Now the government of Micronesia chose the Moderna vaccine for storage and delivery purposes and HHS is providing the vaccine in monthly tranches. So far, we have provided 9,800 doses. The government of Micronesia also has imposed travel restrictions, which have basically stopped all inbound travel. FSM, the FSM was COVID free until early January when Pompeii State, one of the states, uh, the National Health Department obtained a positive COVID-19 uh, test result from a crew member on a ship that had arrived from the Philippines. Since they recorded this first case, there are lots of questions and the public has become very, very concerned. And I and the people of the FSM will really appreciate your advice on some of the questions. So here's my first question for you. We know from the world news that some ethnic groups are more susceptible to COVID. In fact, Pacific Islanders in Hawaii are only 4% of the population, but they comprise 25% of positive cases and 24% of deaths from COVID-19. Are the vaccines equally safe and effective for all racial and ethnic groups? Thus far, in both the Moderna and the Pfizer and others, we've made a special attempt to get minority representation. We've done pretty well with African-Americans, brown and black people with about 10 to 11% in the Moderna and about 20% of Latinx in the Moderna. There's been a smaller, much smaller percent of Pacific Islanders, but it looks like there is no difference that we have seen in safety or efficacy in anything based upon ethnic or racial uh, uh, categorization. So we don't have the, the large numbers that we have with African Americans and Latinx, but we do have some numbers with individuals such as Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, Alaskan natives. But again, the numbers are small, but we don't have any reason to believe that there's any difference, certainly in safety and efficacy looks pretty good across the board for all about 94 to 95%. Thank you. Some people are concerned that they are getting a less effective vaccine or that they're being used as lab tests or guinea pigs. And I think you just answered that, you know, is one vaccine more effective than another? The answer is absolutely no difference. In fact, it's striking how similar the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are. They're about 94 to 95% efficacious. They have a good safety record and they're very good against serious disease in addition to clinically apparent disease. So I would say they're indistinguishable. Thank you. The FSM, Micronesia, they have a very young population with about 40% younger than 18. How old does one need to be to receive the vaccine? And when do you think vaccines will be available for persons under the age of 18? Yeah, well, right now, the Moderna trial went down to 18 and the uh, Pfizer trial went down to 16. It's going to start going down to 12. In the next month, we're going to be doing a clinical trial to what's called an age de-escalation, starting off at a certain age and working your way down. So we would hope that by the time we get a few months into this, that vaccines will be available progressively to younger and younger people within several months. That is great to hear. Last week, my family and I received our second dose of the vaccine. What are the chances that individuals could transmit COVID-19 even after they have been vaccinated? There is certainly a theoretic possibility because the vaccine a primary endpoint was shown to be protection against clinically apparent disease, not necessarily against asymptomatic infection. We're going to find out those data pretty soon, but right now we don't know that, but it is conceivable 
that someone can be vaccinated, be protected against clinically apparent disease, but could still get infected and have virus in their nasopharynx, and so theoretically could sh shed virus and infect someone else. That's the reason why we say until the level of virus is so low in society that you should still wear a mask even if you have been vaccinated. Um, the president of the FSM, His Excellency David Canuelo, has stated that he wants 100% vaccination of its population before he consider, reconsiders uh, repatriations of its citizens into the FSM. What percent of the population do you think needs to be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity? You know, we don't know the exact number, but if you try and make extrapolations from what we know about measles, what the efficacy of the vaccine is, what the transmissibility is, and what the required percentage of herd immunity would be, even though we don't know, the estimate is that for COVID-19, herd immunity would require anywhere from 70 to 85% of the people vaccinated. Okay, so let's say that vaccinated individuals who present a negative COVID-19 test right before traveling, they arrive in a country, how safe is this? Should they quarantine after they arrive? If yes, how many days do you think they should uh, quarantine? Are there any other protocols they should follow? Yeah, well, there are two approaches. One, you can quarantine for 10 days without getting a test or you can get a test if it's negative, then you only have to quarantine for seven days. Outstanding, thank you so much. Dr. Fauci, you have been very, very generous with your time today. And I want you to know that, you know, how much I and the U.S. Embassy in Colonia appreciate it. We hope you can visit us in Micronesia someday. I will convey this information back to the leaders and people of Micronesia. Thank you so much again, have a great day. You're quite uh, welcome. Nice to be speaking with you, Ambassador. Take care.